everyone. Welcome back to Right Now, an author's platform. I am so excited to be here and share this really special space with a good friend of mine, co-worker. I mean, we work together in so many different arenas. I have my very good friend here today who's a coach, a speaker, an author, an entrepreneur. Oh my gosh, it goes on and on, but I'm going to let her tell you all of that. Carmen is in the house. Woo! Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Carmen. Welcome. So glad Thank that you're you. here today. So tell us a little bit about you. Who is Carmen? Loaded question. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> So, well, I'm Carmen, and thank you for that introduction. Yes, we have worked in so many different projects already. It's amazing how technology has just made it so easy, right, to just connect with the world. I think that, and thanks to the pandemic, I think, you know, the pandemic opened up all these doors to just get out of our little bubble and, like, explore different arenas, like you have said and zoom was one of them and now stream yard um so a little bit about my story who am i so i'm carmen born and raised in mexico to the age of 15 came to the united states at 15 and i have stayed ever since um english is my second language so there's a little bit of an accent there and you know i I'm a mom, a wife, an entrepreneur, a teacher, a coach, like you said. There's a little bit of, you know, small little different hats everywhere. Um, yeah. I did not realize. I mean, I think you've said it and it just never dawned on me because your English is so amazing. But English is your second language. Yes. So I always figured, obviously, that. Um, it wasn't your only language because being where you're from, you know, that the predominant language um, is not Mexico, is not English, it's Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. So I always figured there was both there. But so when you, the, sorry, side note, everybody, but I got to ask her this question. So when you came to the U.S. at 15, did you have to start from scratch with English? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. There was... So when I was in Mexico, like I learned, you know, just you take English as one of the passing, I mean, one of the requirements to get to the next grade. And I had to know 10 verbs. And I just, I remember I, thinking, I'm not going to pass it because I cannot remember 10 verbs. So anyway, mm -hmm. so I studied them, but it was, it just sounded so different. And by the time that class ended, like I just didn't remember anything. All I remember is that when I knew that I was going to come to the United States, I had to remember just like small little things like, please, thank you. Where is the bathroom? <laughs> right. So, but it was like, what is the bathroom kind of thing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and not really understanding. I'm like, okay, so if I ask, but if somebody tells me or answers back, I'm not going to understand it. So when I came to the United States and then I went to high school, it was very tough. <laughs> you know, it was really wow. tough getting my way around, especially when there was a lot of people who didn't speak um, Spanish and they'd be like, oh, sorry, no Spanish. And I would just say like, oh, where can I find my classroom? You know, but yeah, it, it was definitely an experience. <laughs> So when you came here and you went to high school, you didn't go to a special school that just was predominantly Spanish or an immersion type of school for, you know, if it was somebody speaking English coming into an immersion school where they're speaking Spanish, you came right in, went to the regular school system, and you're trying to navigate not only what in the world am I, is my teacher saying, but you were having a hard time even figuring out how to navigate through the school. Carmen, that's amazing. And look at you today. No wonder, no wonder you are, I mean, you don't quit on anything and you push through everything. Just a little bit of this backstory on you is incredible uh, that you, that you did that. So how long did it take before we get into the rest of your story? But this is so interesting and it tells people a little bit more about you and the type of person that you are. So how long do you feel like it took for you to really get um, 
a grounding on the English language. Maybe you didn't feel like you were totally fluent or maybe you did feel like you were fluent, but how long did it take from going to like, where's, where's the bathroom to uh, being able to feel comfortable having a conversation? Oh, wow. Very good question. <laughs> so I understood English first and some of my classes were in Spanish because the school actually did offer some Spanish classes, but I, there were some of them were in English. And those are the ones that I had the hardest time, especially math. So there was an assistant for math who used to explain it to all the non-English speakers, right? Which is kind of like privilege because there were other people from other countries who didn't speak English, but they had no Farsi or any other language, you know? So we were so blessed that there was a Spanish speaking assistant who would right. explain us um, the thing. But I'm going to say that when I, like I picked it up quite fast. I had the intention to learn it because in school, high school is very cruel. And so I was picked on calling, you know, being called different names because I didn't speak the language. And so I hung out with a group of friends who were fine with it, not learning the English, right? Or the language or just learning enough to just get by. But I was like, I don't want to be like that. I want to be like the other ones, like the ones that speak it really well. I want to be like those. And so I made it a goal to come home and learn new words. And so I would get the dictionary and I would have my little sister who was born here. And that's another story. And she, I would say like, read to me. So she would read to me stories, like part of her books, right? And so I would be like, oh, so how do you pronounce that word? And so I would actually study the language. Oh, so happy. So if there was only one P, it would say happy. If it has two P's, it would say happy. And I'm like, you know, so I started kind of like understanding the language. And by the end, I'm going to say of 16, so about a year into the United States, I could understand a lot more than I can speak it. And so when I would go to McDonald's, even though I knew there were, they were Spanish speakers, I would try my best to say it in English and I would get so nervous. So we would go to a restaurant and I would, and I would try to order in English. And it was not until I started hanging out with the people that, or a group of friends who did not speak any Spanish whatsoever. And I had to force myself to speak it. And a lot of the times they wouldn't really understand what I would say, but they would be like, what? And I would just tell them, right? I would just be like, okay. So I would kind of like make signs and this, so I would get my dictionary because I would carry my dictionary everywhere. And I would tell them this word. And so it would be like, oh, and they would repeat it for me. And I'm going to say that that was kind of like the the beginning of my journey speaking English, you know, just learning it because at the house it was just all Spanish. And then TV, my I had a stepbrother and my stepbrother would be like, no, don't put the subtitles. You got to learn it like that. Take out the subtitles. And I would not like it. But now I'm so grateful for all those people that pushed me, like my stepdad that pushed me to speak it. My mom would also encourage me like, oh, you're picking it up so good. And also my mom didn't really get a handle of the English language, even though she had been here for a long, for a very long time. And I said, I don't want to be like that. I want to speak English. I want to be, I, I want to blend in, you know? So, yeah. Wow. That is such a cool part of your story that at 15, you came here without really much understanding of the language at all. And that how you, here you are now today, just so easy to understand. Um, and on top of that, because of your go get spirit, like, I'm not going to let this stop me. I'm going to learn this. I love it. You carried your dictionary. You hung out with people that didn't know the language so that you were forced to communicate. Um, and, and all of that really was building blocks for what you're doing now, because here you are now. So, hey, everybody, you know, she's already talked about being a coach. She's already talked about being a speaker, already talked a little bit about being an author. And we're going to dive into that in a second. But so, by the way, she's coaching, speaking and writing in English. OK, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so you, these were really the seeds you were sowing and it was the ground level of where you're at today. You were pouring all of that really back into yourself 
because of the direction that God was having you go. And that would bring you to where you are today, where I've, I've read your writing. You're a really good writer. And <clears throat> had I not known what you just shared with me, I wouldn't have gone, oh, well, English is her second language. You're really a proficient writer and you're really good at communicating your point. Your content is always fabulous. And uh, so, and even hearing you as a speaker right now, but I've had the privilege of hearing you speak with Les Brown. I've had the privilege of, of being with you in classes where you've led classes, uh, where, where you have come in and done part of a class. Like if I was teaching and I'm like, okay, could you take this part, Carmen? And you do it with such grace and excellence. So I want to just encourage everybody out there that if you're listening to the story and you're like, oh, I don't know if I think I, I can do this. What an encouragement that Carmen just gave to you because she went from not speaking the English language at all. So no matter what you think you're not capable of doing, she's now speaking, writing, teaching, and also as she's going to talk about in a few minutes here, has projects you know, going on in the world where she is helping other people now to write, speak, and teach. And not necessarily saying, hey, if English isn't your second language, she's just coming in and saying, hey, I'm a pro as a speaker and as an author, et cetera, let me teach you how it's done. And so what an incredible story you have, Carmen. And so let's start with your writing. Like you have a couple of books. Do you want to talk to us about your books? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was given the opportunity, right? You know, it's like funny before I jump into the book situation or uh, that you said that English was building right is like the building blocks <clears throat> excuse me of my career and it's true and i had so it was like a very good observation because a lot of the times i share it and i think that many times people miss it right that it was like i had two choices right i had the choice of understanding hey well english is not my first language and this is just pretty much the limiting beliefs, right? And going with the flow pretty much. And there was the other side of me where it was an encouragement, the fact that I didn't understand it and the fact that I wanted to understand thoroughly the English language, right? Okay. I've always enjoyed writing. So I would have become an author even if I would have stayed in Mexico because um, I think that writing has always been for me a form of expression. Sure like the best form of expression for me, right? It was a way for me to um, let my emotions out or mm -hmm. just under, like understand the world when no one had answers for me, pen and paper were always there for me. And so going back now into the books, like one thing led to another and they directed me, like my journey brought me to this book at the age of 17, for instance, um, at the age of 17, I already knew, can you imagine just at the age of 17, I already had it in my mind that I wanted to write a book one day. And I told, I remember telling one of my friends, I said, you know what, I'm going to write a book that is going to call Carmen's Adventures. Because I felt that at the age of 17, there was so much that had transpired in my life already, right? But it was always the fear of, well, English is not my my first language. So who's going to want to read it? Who's going to want to listen from blah, 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 who is right. It's, and again, self-limiting beliefs, but I just, some, something inside of me, there was like a little light that just kept on like lighting up. Right. And two, two books later, right. Can you see it right there? Yeah. Yes. So two books later, I'm just proud of how far I have come and when I say proud it doesn't come from an arrogant standpoint it's just that it just takes you know as an author it takes so much and when you write a book or a chapter or just a page of something that you want to share to the world about yourself it comes from a vulner vulnerability, right? It's very vulnerable many times of you to share something that you normally wouldn't share with, with the world. But also, it's almost like healing. And it's not just healing, but I think for me, the hardest part of writing is that I had to speak about something that I thought was buried already, and I didn't want to 
about like talk about it ever again right so writing the books was so therapeutic was such a beautiful experience and it, i just feel that everybody needs to share their story <laughs> you know even if they don't want to share it with the world like just write it down i don't know what do you think <laughs> i love that and i and i agree 100% when things uh bother me when i go through things one of the first things that i do is i take pen to paper and i start writing um and my, i learned that from my dad my father was very much that way when he was in the earth he wrote and uh he never published a book he could have he did publish different articles and things in uh, different places, but, you know, um, writing was very part of his healing. In fact, when his mother passed away, he wrote a, a story, you know, a, about it and put it into a fictional thing, which I didn't find till after he passed. And I came across it and read it. And it was so cool. And I went, wow, see, I knew he was a writer. Um, and so I can really understand and appreciate where you're coming from because writing is a way that I heal. It's a way that I transform. Um, and then being able to utilize that gift to be able to not just be use it for myself, but to be able to take those stories, take that knowledge, take that healing, and then push it forward to somebody else is a big deal. So I think that that's fantastic what you're doing, which means to me, like, if I, if I didn't know you, Carmen, but I do. But what you just said, this is what I hear. So if I read your stuff, you're going to be real with me. But not only that, I, I will walk on your journey with you. But beyond that, I can take your tools and I can use them for myself. So it's not just reading the pages of your story and go, oh, man, she's got a story. But that the tools that are in there and all the education that you have, because you've had a life's worth of education, uh, you now are pouring that into those that get the privilege of being in, in your circle of influence. So that they're influenced by you, right? So mm -hmm. I think it's great what you're doing. Tell us about your book. So you point, you picked them up. Do you have, do you have anything you want to share about them? Um, what you what you wrote about or where yeah. people get them? I love that one. I love that one. Good to see you. Little backstory about Les Brown. This is how, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Yes. <laughs> Super firm believer of that. In 2016, I was going through a path where, again, a crossroad. Do I go to the left? Do I go to the right? And amidst that confusion, I happened to bump into a video from Les Brown, not knowing who Les Brown is. And he said, you have greatness in you. You have greatness in you, right, in this recording. And I will play it every morning on my way to work or on my way to school, the wow. same recording, the same recording. And I don't remember what the recording was about. The only thing I remember, it was, you have greatness in you. <laughs> and that's why I kept on playing it over and over. Because when you come, and I, I talk about this in my book, when you come from where I come from, or just a third world country, right? And you don't know where the next meal is coming from, right? And all you see is pretty much violence and you have endured like so much pain, right? When you come to a place and somebody tells you, you have greatness in you, it lights something up, right? Yeah. Yes. It was for a lot, for a long time, it was more of the, yeah, I don't have greatness in me. Like w the only thing that I would hear, it was pretty much how mouthy I was or how imperfect I was or how unwanted or how, it was usually like the negatives, right? If I would have chosen that narrative, right? I wouldn't be here today, obviously, right? Okay. But because I heard that I had greatness in me, it was, I think that my journey was kind of like this, right? But when I heard that, it started to t go a little bit higher and wow. higher. So one thing led to the next. Next thing you know, there's a book in here. And I would say, I want to meet this many person. Who is Les Brown? And I got to meet him in person, <laughs> even though I didn't take a picture. So there's no proof, but you're my witness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's such a, 
oh, it's such a touchy thing, you know, to have it. Anyways, my page is page 91. And in here, in The Greatness in You, I signed it for, for a friend of mine. It's um, 1983 is my page on page 91. And nice. 1983, because that's the year that I was born. That's the year Champion was born. Mm-hmm. And again, going back to not coming from a, from an arrogant standpoint, right? But if you don't give yourself your flowers, who is? Yeah, it's true that other people are going to give you your flowers. But your flowers aren't. Anyone who gives you your flowers are, is, they're, is not going to feel as good as when you give your own flowers first. So right? True. If you don't internalize the greatness that you have within, it's harder to believe it when somebody else says it. True. And yeah, it's true that sometimes you want to believe it, right? Like, for instance, you have greatness in you. Well, that sounded great, but it didn't really hit all points in my brain until I believed that I did have greatness in me. And I think writing 1983, the chapter, that's when I really finally internalized the greatness that I had in me, you know, where I said, my gosh, and especially writing down the story where I talk about my childhood coming up to to the United States. So I touch, it's kind of like a synopsis of what the book that I'm working on, which is a memoir. And it just tells you a little bit of like, oh, this is Carmen. This is what she went through. This is when she came over here, right? And yeah, so super excited about this um, about this piece of work right here. And through that, I was also giving another opportunity to write this other book, which is, can you help Get Up, God's Not Done With You Yet. Amen, sister. You know, and so Patricia was, the person that actually, um, the creator of the book, the visionary of the book. And she worked with Les Brown too. And she reached out to me through social media. And she said, Hey, I have this book opportunity. This is the topic. And I said, Oh my gosh, get up. God is not done with you yet. Well, God's not done with me yet. So I just felt like it was a message from above coming directly to me because, again, I was at a crossroad. And I always put a crossroad because I literally picture myself. I envision myself like standing in front of a crossroad in the middle of the desert where one goes to the left, deeper in the desert, and one goes to the right where it goes to the city. But you just don't see it, right? Like, where do you, where, which side do you choose? And so get up is not done with you. I was there where I said, what do I do with the situation that I was facing in my life? Do I go left? Do I go right? So come and get up. God's not done with you yet. Talks about, do you believe in miracles? And I don't know, are we allowed to read part of the book or no? Yeah. 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 Whatever you want. So do you believe in miracles is because on this one I focus more on my upbringing as a Catholic girl who has no idea what Catholic means I was just Catholic by choice I mean not by choice but by by tradition by default right because you grew up in Mexico and everyone chooses your religion for you and so it's me trying to understand why there was so many saints, why we had a rosary. It's about all these things that I don't know what they were for, but but I just knew that I had to do it. So in here, I write, I am no longer a slave to the mistakes that I have made. Mm -hmm. I am a flawed human being, but I am one with God. I have forgiven every single human being that have hurt me. You know, and for me to have written that was really powerful because I realized that I have grown so much, Pamela, that I said, I have really forgiven everybody, you know, that has hurt me and all those burdens and chains that kept me tied to that old self have no longer any weight on me. There's like even a song for that, you know, where it's just like, uh, that right like there's the chains have been broken and they are not holding me back and so do you believe in miracles it's that the miracles are everywhere and i'm gonna read the 
final part of my book, which is Do You Believe in Miracles? Life is never fair. Life is never just. Life is simply life. And to that, we must adjust. Mm. Life will give you lemons or pears or sometimes scars. But don't you dare forget in the dark, you see the stars. Life is as you see it, be it black or be it blue, based on your understanding of your story and your truth. Miracles always happen every second of each day, but it is in the eyes of the beholder what you see and what you say. Life owes me nothing, not a penny, nor excuse. If you play the game of life, you can win, but you can lose. Life is never fair. Life is never just. Life is simply life, and to that, we must adjust. That's so powerful. This coming from the woman who didn't know English. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Talk about adjusting. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Thank so you. Powerful. So powerful. And from that, now you have launched out into some projects surrounding, whether for not surrounding some writing, but some other aspects of well, as well. So talk about adjusting. Uh, tell us about these other projects that you are now have launched, are launching. What are they about? What's all going on? Yeah, so I'm working. So the journey for me writing has been has been amazing. And I feel that a lot of people kind of like shy away from writing, whether even though sometimes like they feel attracted to the whole idea, the fact that they are not native speakers, right? Or the fact that they probably I mean, these are more so the common things that I hear. Well, I'm not a good writer. I can't spell very well. Well, English is not my first language or even like I can even like write in my own language or whatever it is, right? I just thought that the word writing, I mean, technology has made it so much easier for everyone to just get it done, right? And maybe you're not the type of person so i work with kids and one of the things is like there are different learners right they are the tactile learners the auditory the visions right the visions the visionary the visual sorry the visual um learners and so you have to find what works with you right perhaps you're two perhaps you're one right but for me i am a very tactile and visual learner so I need to find something that feels right, right? Something that feels right on my hands. I have to find the right pen. Like I cannot write with just any regular pen. It has to be a specific point, the specific way. It's just like, that's just how my brain works. If I try to write with a pencil and thinking of just a regular notepad, my brain is going to shy away from it, right? So I think that it's a matter of finding the right tools for anyone. So in this whole workshop that I created, it's a workshop, a mini course and a masterclass is just pretty much teaching people the art of writing, the art of extracting your story. So I have put on put in the workshop that is very simple for a person to hone in on. I mean, because explaining your story is i mean think about it right like one day is one whole chapter sometimes right because you go through so much so yeah. how do you pick the main ideas that really shape who you are where are the are your crossroads right like where are they so i pretty much help people extract their story hone into that story that idea and do something with it whether they want to do an article, they want to blog, they want to write a book, whatever it is, it's really not the, that's, that comes later on on the masterclass, but the workshop is like extracting their idea, get, getting them comfortable writing, finding the different tools, finding the, the time and all of that. So that's the workshop and the mini course is something more in depth 
of storytelling. And then the masterclass is where we go more into the, okay, well, let's get your first chapter ready, right? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to publish it as a blog, as an article, as a short story, as a novel, as a memoir? Like, what is it? So it's pretty much that piece of material they end up with. And then after that is the whatever else they want to do with it. You know, that's where um, you come into play. And it's if they want to, you know, create the actual book. It's like that's where all of us as a team, we pretty much help them create another one of these books. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. That is so exciting. Yeah. So basically from, and I, and I know I keep circling back, but I just, this is so powerful from the woman at 15 who couldn't speak English. You're now coaching and educating people on how to write and to not let language barriers stop you to, you know, all those kind of things, whether it is a chapter in a book, a whole book, a blog, an article, people can come to you mm -hmm. and get some one-on-one -on -one help, but you also have created a class or a master class. You're creating um, a, pretty much a um, an anthology type of community where people can come together and and have that iron, iron sharpening iron experience to be together under your direction, and then bringing in other experts as well to help them. Like this is amazing. Like as I'm even saying it, I'm sitting there going, "Wow, Carmen!" And I knew that you were doing this. I was with you in the beginnings of it when you were like formulating it and we've been walking alongside of you for part of it, but hearing it today is a whole nother story because it's, it's totally connecting the dots of your life. And I find it to be fascinating. So tell us for that person sitting out there going, Oh, that is so me. I'm terrified to write. Maybe they don't have a language barrier, but they just don't think that they're that great at grammar or something. How do they get in touch with you? What's step one? Yeah, so step one is find me on Instagram because on Instagram, I'm the most active, I'm going to say, and that is at Car Coach Carmen Cadena. So if you find me there, you on the I have a link in there where you can sign up for the free workshop. Uh, there's also a website that I have. So pretty much on that link is a link tree. You find all the links to connect with me. Right on. So there's a free workshop. So th did you hear that, y'all? So you're going to go to her Instagram. You're going to click on the link. You're going to take the free workshop. You're going to learn a ton. And then you're going to circle back to her and she's going to take you by the hand and guide you to your next place on your journey. This is so yeah. huge. This is so huge. Thank so you. What else, is there anything else about the journey or about what you're doing? Or do you want to tell us a little bit about the, the free master class or anything? Yeah. But, you know, let me just go back to what you said, you know, if there's somebody out there who thinks, Oh, I like it, but mm, I'm terrified or whatever it is. I just want to acknowledge the fact that, yeah, it is true that when you hear someone is a best-selling author or someone is giving you a workshop and you don't even know what to expect, it could be a little bit daunting in the very beginning, right? Because whatever, right? There's so many reasons why it could be daunting. But I just want to say that I'm not claiming to be an English proficient writer, right? I leave that to the editor, right? I just get my ideas out. And I think that that is pretty much what deters people is the fact that they think they need to know perfect English or perfect anything. And right. you really don't. A lot of the notes when I wrote this book down, they were in Spanish. So now the interesting thing is that when you are a bilingual person living in a country where it's you're not really dominant on either one of the languages. So I don't dominate English more than I dominate Spanish. So I, I'm like, I, I tell, like I joke around with my family and I say, I'm not from here and I'm not from there. I'm like from in between, right? It's like the subculture because 
I still, a lot of the things, I still think them in Spanish to translate them into English and vice versa. When I'm speaking Spanish and there's something that I don't know, I think of it in English and then I, tr I say it. So either way, it sounds funny, right? And so that was almost my setback for a while until I said, I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people out there who understand what I'm talking about because they know exactly <laughs> when you think in English or Spanish and you translate it and it doesn't sound right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to find your people. And one of the things is that don't come into any workshop or into any writing thinking that it has to be perfect because it doesn't right there's somebody out there who's going to resonate with the way that you write with the way that you you speak with the way that you explain things with your story with everything right you just put it out there pray about it if you practice prayer but definitely put it out in the universe to attract the people to attract your tribe because that's pretty much what I am going after, my tribe. I'm not selecting and I'm not handpicking anybody. My tribe is going to come naturally, right? And so for anyone who is on the fence of whether I should write or not, what I think that it's just so worth putting your story out, your ideas out, whether it is for you your family, your future generations, or just to get it out of your chest. You know, it's almost like a spiritual thing. So mm -hmm. if you are nervous, don't be, because this is a very inclusive workshop. Everybody's welcome. Even if you don't even speak any language and you speak sign language, we'll make it work. <laughs> you know, love doesn't that. even matter. <laughs> I love that. All are welcome. Oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you. Kevin, you are such a testament of what it means when somebody sees and recognizes the greatness in themselves, becomes their own best advocate and turns the lemon into lemonade. And then, you know, just runs after the call. I call it the call of God, the call of God on their life, wanting to be that world changer, making lasting impact in, in the earth at, while we're here every day. And that is what you are doing. I'm so grateful that you came on the show today and that you are sharing all of this richness and greatness and, and being so transparent and telling us a little bit more about your backstory. Um, I'm excited to run with you on your journey. And I am believing that even right now as we're speaking that your tribe is running towards you and that you are going to affect, you already have affected so many lives, but there's so many more that are coming your way before we wrap up this time together is there anything else on your heart that you wanted to share you know just encourage people to start writing you know it doesn't you don't even need to join the workshop or any workshop or anything right but start journaling there is just so much uh, research behind when you jot down your ideas, your thoughts, whatever it is, you know, um, it just does something to the brain that we're not going to get all technical here, right? But there are videos for that. But it's very healing, right? So whatever you're going through, try it, just try writing it down. And if you are a writer already, then keep going. And if you are already have a piece of work that you want to publish, reach out to Pamela, reach out to me, you know, and or reach out to someone, but definitely don't take that with you because your worth is, I mean, your story is worth sharing. Mm -hmm. That is so beautiful and so true. And look at how far Carmen has come from not speaking the language to doing all that she's doing right now. What if at some point in time she had said, eh, my story doesn't matter. Just think about that. Look at all that has been accomplished in her life. And now here we are in this podcast and she is being heard. Uh, her voice is being heard all over the world, not just here, but in other, uh, in other venues as well. And now she's taking that call to the next level. And, and I believe that'll include those of you that are viewing and listening today. So don't hold back. Don't think it's insignificant. Don't think you're not ready. I always say 
when the pupil is ready, the teacher appears. So take this as your holy moment, your aha or your epiphany moment that the teacher has appeared and reach out to Carmen. Certainly you can reach out to me, but I want to highlight Carmen today. She is magnificent and she gives her all. So I want to thank you again, Carmen, for being here today and for being so transparent and telling us all about you. You are amazing and I love you so much. Thank you again for being on right now. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> and remember, you all are here on purpose, with a purpose, by design, not by default. So go out there and be the salt and the light everywhere you go. We'll see you next time on Right Now. And don't forget to, to share this. I almost forgot to say that. Share this message today. Share it all over. Send it to somebody in an email. Post it on your Instagram. Wherever you are at, send this on because obviously this message needs to go all around the world. We'll see you next time on Right Now. Bye.